See, my next guest says publishing interim results through a press release is neither good scientific practice nor does it help build public trust in vaccines. He says instead it should come with full publication of peer-reviewed research in a scientific journal. Well, that's the opinion of Richard Horton, editor-in-chief of The Lancet, which is among the world's oldest and best-known peer-reviewed medical journals. He joins me now uh, from London. Um, Hi, Becky. To your point, should we expect... Hello there. Should we expect to see um, publication about the Pfizer vaccine in The Lancet at any time soon? <laughs> well, I can't tell you when they're going to publish their work. And, of course, we've got the AstraZeneca-Oxford vaccine. Mm. Uh, and, uh, in fact, a total of 11 vaccines are in late-stage clinical trials. Um, and we should be seeing those results published, some of them before the end of the year, I'm sure. You you made a very good point. Um, th th this this Pfizer announcement by social media, effectively, um, you know, to many people, it felt like a rush to get first in the queue when it comes to this vaccine race. Um, and you say that's yeah. worrying. You say that's worrying because it doesn't give people confidence. Yes, and you saw a few days later the Russian Sputnik V vaccine. They they put out a press release saying mm. that their vaccine was 92% effective. Um, so it feels like mm. we're in the space race, but for coronavirus vaccines. You know, the big worry is um, the anti-vaccination movement, uh, and they're making headway. And so we've got to disclose results about these vaccines as carefully and scientifically as possible so we don't give them any headroom to damage confidence. And that's the danger mm. of science by press release. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> President Trump has been teasing a vaccine um, by or around election time for a very long time. Can he claim this as a win for his administration out of interest? It's definitely a win for American science. Uh, in fact, it's mm. a win for science worldwide. Uh, it normally takes seven to eight years to get a vaccine from initial starting point. Uh, within 10 months, we have over 100 vaccine candidates at various stages of study. That is unprecedented, uh, like everything else about this pandemic. Um, but it's a real tribute to scientific cooperation um, between universities, between private sector, between big pharma. Mm. Um, we've never seen anything like it before in history. The next stage uh, will, of course, be uh, manufacturing and distribution. Um, distributing a vaccine like this, as I understand it, is extremely challenges, challenging. Just explain, if you will. Yeah, the, the vaccine is uh, un relatively unstable. So that means it has to be kept mm. at a temperature of minus 70 to 80 degrees. Um, your normal fridge temperature is about four degrees. Uh, so you can imagine that it's not, there aren't many freezers that operate at that level. So you're going to have to have the vaccine um, in uh, major pharmacies, in hospitals, where it will then have to be distributed out to pharmacies or primary care centers, but you only have 48 hours where you can have the vaccine not in minus 70 uh, temperatures. So mm. it's going to require a very, very efficient network uh, for distribution. So it's going to be tough. It's possible, but it's going to be difficult. 